Welcome to today's presentation where we're going to talk about the pathophysiology for COVID-19, which is coronavirus. So before we start the presentation, please, if you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe by clicking on the red subscription button so that you can actually receive notification whenever I post my new videos. So when you look at this virus, the coronavirus, this virus, it's mostly love to affect the respiratory system and the organs that are affected in the respiratory system are the cells in the alveoli okay so before we get into the pathophysiology we are aware that this disease it is mostly uh, spread by respiratory uh, uh, droplets okay so now let's try first by drawing the respiratory system let's just try to draw the respiratory system so we are saying that this is um, this is the trachea and you know that the trachea it actually bifurcates into the right and the left bronchi so it bifurcates into the right and the left bronchi and you know that the uh, the right bronchi or the right bronchus it actually divides into three lobes okay into three lobar bronchus the right bronchi or the right bronchus it actually divides into three lobar bronchus so you can see coming These are lobar bronchus, or you can call them segmental bronchus. Okay, so this is the this is the lung tissue. So this is the lung. Okay, and we said that the right lung it actually has three lobes as you can see one two three so we have the upper lobe okay we have also the middle lobe as well as the lower lobe okay how many lobes one two three so in all these lobes these lobar bronchus they are going to divide into small bronchioles okay into small bronchioles so let us try to see the division okay so as you see that here it divides divides into small uh, bronchioles then it will give way to this air sac which we are calling as the alveoli when it's one it is called as an alveolist when there are many they are called as alveoli okay so as you can see divide um, Right. So, these are called the alveoli. When it is one, it is called as an alveolist. So, we are saying that this virus, this coronavirus, it affects this, the cells that are found inside this alveoli. All right? We are saying that this coronavirus, it affects the cells that are found inside the alveoli. So let us try to bring the alveoli out here and we see how this virus actually affects this alveoli. Okay? Or this alveolist. So we are going to bring, let us assume that we bring out this uh, alveol, alveolist outside here. So we are saying that this is a bronchi bronchioles. It's a bronchial. And this is the alveoli of course let's try to make it more straight and this is the alveoli all right so now as you can see this is inside the air sac inside the air sac which we are calling as an alveoli wall okay inside here so inside this alveoli this is a membrane okay and just down here we have a blood vessel okay a blood vessel a capillary blood vessel the ones that allow the gaseous exchange so let us also try to draw a blood vessel here all right 
we also have a blood vessel in red color. So when you look at this alveoli, inside we have got cells. Okay, inside the alveoli we have got T cells. So as you can see, inside we have got different types of cells. So different type of cell. Although I'm not going to draw the cells. Not going. Okay. So as you can see, all of this um, alveoli, oh, it is actually surrounded by cells. Okay? And these cells, they are different. And what is the name of these cells? These are pneumocyte cells. Okay? These are pneumocyte cells. Okay, these are pneumocyte cells. So as you can see, the way I've drawn these cells is that they are different, right? They are different. You have seen this is a cell like it's coming and it's not shaded. But this one, this one, of course, it is shaded. Okay, and this one it is also shaded. So all these cells, they are called the pneumocyte cells. But they have got different functions that they play in relation to the alveoli and uh, making the lung to actually expand. So these cells that have shed, these cells, let me just try to draw to write their name. These cells that have shed, these are called as the, the pneumocyte cell type 2 or the alveolar cell type 2. These are type 2 alveoli cells okay or you can call them type 2 pneumocyte pneumocyte cells okay these ones are shaded they are type 2 alveolar cells or pneumocyte cells what about these ones let me write them in green color these cells have you seen this is a cell this cell so this cell it is what we are calling as type 1 okay this is what we are calling as uh, um, type 1 alveoli cell or pneumocyte or pneumocyte type 1 this cell Okay, so as you see, we have got type 2 pneumocyte cell or alveolar cells as well as type 1 alveolar cell or pneumocyte cell. So inside the alveoli, we also have the macrophage. Okay, we also have the macrophage and this macrophage, it helps us or it fights against invading what? Pathogens. So as you can see that... Uh, Let's just try to write as abbreviation as A, which is macrophage, okay? We have the macrophage inside. This macrophage, it actually uh, says it is strong, okay? It is strong. This macrophage, it is actually fighting the invading pathogens. That is the function of this uh, macrophage inside there. So now, <clears throat> what, is the, what is the function of the type 1 alveolar cells or the pneumocyte type 1? These cells, they help in gaseous exchange, okay? Because you know that this is a blood vessel. This is a capillary blood vessel. And the capillary blood vessel, it, it act, that's where gaseous exchange takes place. So these type 1 alveolar cells, they help in gaseous exchange. And the type 2 pneumocyte cells, these cells, they produce surfactant. And what is the function of surfactant? It decreases the surface tension inside the alveoli and prevent collapse of the alveoli or collapse of the lungs, which is a condition known as atelectasis when the lungs collapse. Okay, surfactant it is a phospholipid which actually decreases.
the surface tension inside the alveoli and prevent the alveoli from collapsing. And because once if the alveoli collapse, the lung is going to fail to do its function. And when the lung collapse, it is what we are calling as the atelectasis. Okay. So now let's come back. We are saying that this coronavirus, it actually loves, it gets inside the alveoli and it attaches to the cells that are found inside the alveoli. So which type of cells? Because we've got many types of cells inside, as you, have, as you all know. So let us try to draw the coronavirus. So we are saying that this is the virus, right? In red color. This is the virus. So this virus is going to come inside this the virus as you know that this virus it has got the spike proteins or the s spikes okay and it also has an rn inside a gene okay it has a genome which is a positive sense single stranded rna inside so once this uh this coronavirus gets inside the alveoli this virus it is going to attach to the receptors of the type 2 pneumocyte cells okay so this virus it's not going to, to get attached to this type 1 it is going to get attached to the type 2 pneumocyte cells that are found inside the alveoli so what happens you know that this virus it actually have it has to get inside the host inside the cytoplasm for it to replicate and manufacture or produce uh, many viruses so we are going to draw this type 2 pneumocyte cell together with the virus outside so that we see how the virus actually gets inside the type 2 pneumocyte cell cytoplasm so as you can see that uh, we will draw here so we draw this uh, type 2 pneumocyte cell to get the virus outside. So I'll start first by drawing the virus. So we are saying that this is the virus, right? This is the coronavirus. And this coronavirus, we are saying that it has got some uh, like fem uh, the proteins outside. And these proteins, they are acting like a key which is unlocking or the key which is making this virus to get attached to the type 2 pneumocyte cell receptor okay so these proteins they are what we're calling as spikes okay or s spikes proteins okay these are s spikes or spike proteins in this one the nucleus inside this one's what we are calling as the positive single stranded RNA. You know that the virus is actually RNA. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so this is a little bit structure of the virus. So let us try to draw the, the host cell uh, cytoplasm. So we are saying that this is the pneumocyte cell. Okay. This is the pneumocyte cell. So, what is going to happen? How does the virus get inside this pneumocyte cell? So, inside the pneumocyte cell, we have got the machinery or the equipment that are found inside the cytoplasm of the pneumocyte cell. We have the ribosomes. You know that each cell, it has got the ribosomes. Alright? So, we have the ribosomes. Then, we also have um, one enzyme. So let's just try to say this is the enzyme which is happy the enzyme it's very happy it's a girl I'm not saying I'm not saying the enzyme it's a girl no we have this enzyme and this enzyme it is what we are calling as the RNA dependent all right RNA dependent RNA polymerase okay inside this is an enzyme RNA dependent RNA polymerase so now how does this virus get inside 
then on top of this pneumocyte cell we have the receptor and this receptor it's acting as a door okay we have the receptor and this receptor it's acting as a door that is preventing this um okay that is preventing anything from coming in if you want to come in you have to pass through this door so this virus if it has to come in it has to pass through this door as you remember i told you that the coronavirus it has got some spikes in these spikes they're acting like a key to open this receptor okay so this receptor it is what we are calling as the this receptor it is what we are calling as the angiotensin converting enzyme okay angiotensin converting angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptor okay this receptor it's found on the type 2 pneumocyte cell so we are saying that this is a coronavirus let us bring this virus here all right so we are bringing the virus here so this is the virus and of course you know that this virus it has the nucleus and of course some spike proteins or some a spikes so you see what's happening these spikes they are inside the angiotensin converting enzyme this it helps these spikes protein they are going to open they will be they will act like a key to open this door the angiotensin converting enzyme so that the virus actually is taken inside all right so this is what what is going to happen with this receptor because of these s spikes the s spikes are going to perform just like a primary attachment okay or if you don't want, you can remember that these S spikes, they will be like a key to open this receptor, which we are calling as the angiotensin converting enzyme receptor. And once there is a primary attachment here, this virus is going to be pulled into the host cell cytoplasm, and it's going to fuse with the membrane. Okay, so we are saying this is step one. All right, then step two. Step two, we are saying that this viral membrane, this virus, so let's bring step two here. This virus, it is going to fuse, okay? It's going to fuse with the host cell cytoplasm, right? And this is the RNA, and the RNA, it's going to come inside, all right? And once the coronavirus this the uh, the single stranded rna this because this virus is going to release this uh, positive single stranded rna inside the host cell cytoplasm once this rna is inside the host cell cytoplasm it's going to do a variety of things guys okay the first thing that this rna will do is that it's going to use it's going to use the host cell cytoplasm to uh to make new polypeptides okay the proteins into in its active form so once this virus this single stranded is here it's going to come here and use the ribosomes that are found inside the cytoplasm by the process of translate it's going to this it's going to there will be translation here there will be translation and if there is translation once this single stranded rna undergoes translation it is going to form different polypeptides these polypeptides they are just proteins that are joined by a chain okay and because of these proteins being joined they are not functional okay they are not functional these uh, polypeptides they need to be cut for them to be functional okay so this uh, uh, rna is going to undergo a process of translation and form different polypeptides so these are what we are calling as uh, polypeptides okay so these polypeptides they are not functional okay if they are remain like this meaning that they can't work so if we produce a drug that can actually inhibit the enzyme from cutting these polypeptides into functional proteins then we can reduce the coronavirus 
and the good news is that we have the drug that can inhibit the enzyme that is going to cut these polypeptides into functional proteins okay so these are polypeptides so look at this polypeptide i told you to say these are not functional they need to be cut so that they become what function so we have another enzyme inside inside our own pneumocyte cell we have another enzyme uh, and this enzyme it's like a cutter so it's like this it's coming like this okay this enzyme it is what we are calling as a protease enzyme okay so this protease enzyme is going to start cutting these chains of polypeptides and make the active proteins it will cut these polypeptides into its active what proteins now these are active so which enzyme cut it's a protease enzyme so we have the drug that can inhibit this enzyme from cutting these polypeptides into its active proteins so that is one way the virus actually uses our own cell ribosomes the other way is that this virus it is going to use this enzyme which we are calling as the rna dependent rna polymerase to make new copies or multiple copies of single-stranded rnas okay this uh, virus uh, it's also going to use the the rna dependent rna polymerase enzyme to make new copies of these single-stranded positive sense rna and then these virus they are going to fuse okay and form a new virus okay so these they are going to form they will fuse and form new virus so let us say this is an, a virus that has been replicated that has actually come out from the cell okay multiple virus are going to come out okay but just because of the my the body sake we're just going to draw one so this is the new virus okay so many virus are going to be formed now remember as this cell has been used this pneumocyte has been used it's going to get damaged okay once there's that usement of this and the virus starts replicating this pneumocyte cell is it's going to get damaged and once this pneumocyte cell becomes damaged it's going to release some enzymes okay some cytokines so once this pneumocyte becomes damaged it let us come here so we have at least we have understood how the virus gets inside and replicates so once this pneumocyte becomes damaged it's going to release some cytokines okay so we are saying that uh, this is a damaged type 2 pneumocyte cell which is releasing some cytokines these cytokines they are going to stimulate the macrophage okay these are going to stimulate the macrophage or they are going to activate this macrophage and once this macrophage inside the alveoli becomes activated guess what to do this macrophage it is going to start releasing cytokines okay remember the first point is that this is a damaged type 2 pneumocyte cell uh, by the which has been damaged by the virus it will release some cytokines and these cytokines are going to activate this macrophage once this macrophage becomes activated this macrophage it is going to start secreting some cytokines one of them the important ones that are going to be released we have I uh, interleukin one okay we also have uh, interleukin six and there will also be tumor necrosis factor alpha these are the big chemicals that are going to be released by the macrophage and these chemicals they are going to enter inside this circulation okay these chemicals they are going to enter inside the circulation and stimulate the smooth muscle cells that are found inside and they are going to lead to arterial dilatation so let us assume that uh, let us assume that 
this artery it's like this this capillary it's like this so because of these chemicals that are going to stimulate the smooth muscle that are found here this artery or this capillary it's going to dilate these chemicals they will lead to arterial dilatation so meaning that this uh, this capillary it won't be like this right it will be like this it's going to dilate and if it dilates meaning that there will be more blood flow to this area and if there is more blood for